So this is Ed Willett and Cheryl Leah, a group called Chance, which has been a studio client of mine for well, many years at this ten point. Years, something like that. We've been doing this for yeah, ten years. So it's like, like yeah. so. holy buckets. Yeah. Think so. <laughs> but you know, one of the things that I've always been, I found interesting is your Cheryl, your story about how you picked studios and your history and, and that sort of thing. Because you, you know, my first reaction, of course, as a equipment designer, it doesn't bother me. But if you were just a unknown studio person potential client and you walked into a place that had no covers on it and wires hanging everywhere you know it's like people would tend to freak out about that a little bit so I would that's the first place I'd go to because it means that there's real work going on there's real invention there's real thought the atmosphere is filled with thought and it's a cerebral just warehousey kind of place where you can feel creative and it's okay and it's not about what you're wearing or all that stupid stuff. It's about the, the sound. It's about the inventing. For me personally, I have, I have contempt for compressors. I hate them. As a singer, I hate them. And here's a guy who invents them, but he's the only one on the planet that I would trust to use a compressor on me because typically compressors are, are misused with dynamic everything. Basically, the more dynamic, the more you can bet the guy's just going with the, with the button, you know, and Dave doesn't do that. If you take too much out of the dynamics out of it, then it, you know, becomes like a screaming, shouting sort of thing, which I guess that's fine as an effect for a certain kind of rock and roll. Well, it's very when you, true. When you create music, acoustic music, um, silence is your, it's part, it's your palette. If you think about, um, music is being contrast it's you know something only sounds as loud as what it's next to um the note preceding or or that whole concept of every note is is coming from somewhere and going to some place and it's all this landscape of dynamics when that landscape is taken out if you take music that depends on that landscape and you just squash it bring the top down and the bottom up there's nothing left of it with dynamics, it's it's nice with Dave when you record here because you can scream as loud as you want, you can whisper, and he has the hearing and the intelligence to not just make everything a big block. And so you have all this room and all these little tiny little scents of this or that. He can hear that, which is an art. One of the areas of research that, that I'm pursuing at the moment is we all know what CDs sound like, we all know what tape sounds like, we all know what vinyl sounds like, and I'm pursuing to find out, understand what the differences are, even at a greater detail, to see if I can improve what the whole digital world sounds like. And ultimately, you know, studio guys are in love with what tape sounds like, but you know, good tape doesn't really sound like all that much, you know. Vinyl has a lot of weird things that take place in the way of distortions and second and third harmonic content being added. There's actually Doppler kind of things that go on that shift the frequency of the harmonics. So in the process of trying to understand vinyl, and which is one of the things that the audiophile people are so in love with, uh, it may be possible to improve not only the recording gear, but the final product and ultimately what a CD or whether it's DVD, audio or whatever format it ultimately ends up in.